This is Pub Battles Austerlitz Scenario by Command Post Games. Now, Command Post Games has an ingenious way of keeping mystery in the Austerlitz setup. And the reason this is so necessary is because the armies at Austerlitz are actually near parity. So whoever attacks is going to be at a disadvantage. The coalition army here is in good defensive ground. Napoleon wants to attack them. So what he did, what his brilliance at Austerlitz is credited with, is he convinced them that he had a small enough force that if they would just attack, they could end this upstart right away. So his intention was to get them to start attacking and then to lay the hammer down. It was a very near-run thing. Playing Two Fists solo like I do, I can recreate that because I'll simply attack as the coalition armies to begin with. And once the coalition realizes, just like they did historically, that the French army was much bigger, then they quickly, or as quickly as they can, will revert to the defense. The coalition army begins with three core hidden on reserve cards. Here you have Bagration's advance guard, Colore's fourth core, and Doctorov's first core. Over on this side, just holding, you have Liechtenstein's Austrian cavalry. Here on the Pratzen, you've got Konstantin with the Russian guard. Stretch out along here, you've got the Russian second and third corps spread out, detachments and all, providing a strong looking force. Behind them, you've got Kenmeyer's Austrian corps, and you've got some guard cavalry, Russian guard cavalry, here and here to bolster the line. Opposite, you have the French army, you've got Sue's huge 4th Corps stretching from here all the way to here and then Lon's 5th Corps from here to here but it's also composed of 5 detachments added to it so it's actually a very small core by comparison. There's nothing here in actuality. Here on turn 1 you've got Napoleon with the Guard and Miraz Cavalry along with Bernadotte and the 1st Corps. They come on turn 1 and this time Rather than shooting up the Olmos Road, they're going to go on a wide flanking move, join Sue's Corps, and drive from there. Also, coming on turn two will be Davu with his third corps. For orientation purposes, this is the north side of the map. French coming in from the west, here on the east side are the coalition armies. Now, the coalition has a superiority in artillery, but Austerlitz has fog. It will be here all morning. In the early morning, the Austrian right advances forward. I have my divider set to one-third of a foot move. These cores can move two-thirds of a foot move over terrain. Now, Bernadette and Napoleon both intend to swing south to the French right flank. Because they're stretched out in road column, they're going to move on parallel lines. This is Bernadotte's corps, and here Napoleon with Murat and Bessier will be lined up behind them. And now we move to mid-morning. The coalition army continues its advance. Bagration. Next we have Kolraith. And finally Doktorov. The Austrian forces are still hidden in the fog. Next Davu moves along the extreme southern edge. Now I've pimped my setup here with these column markers. They're not necessary. I find them cool and useful. A friend of mine makes them, and you can find a link in the description. Now you begin seeing this turn on these minor roads, how stretched out lines can become. And now Bernadotte and Napoleon. And here you see the wisdom and necessity of moving along parallel lines. Except here the French have already taken, I should have gone down here and stayed further this way, they're going to crash right here. Now I could go back and say, oh, do over, I didn't really do that. But you know what? These are the kind of mistakes that happen. Let's see how this turns out. It's late morning, and the fog of Austerlitz persists. Now the, here the French realize they've taken a wrong road. They wanted to take this road and stay on a separate line from the road that the that Bernadotte's corps has to take. Thinking quick, Napoleon directs Marat to come out of column and leave the road. A near traffic dram, but crisis averted. Lichtenstein moves forward. The cavalry hides behind this hill. Now Bagration's advance guard is placed on the map as they are going to come into view when they attack. Now here the French are defending in the town of Griskowitz, which cavalry can't attack in a town. So the cavalry blocks have peeled off to protect the flanks and let the infantry worry about the town. 
Now Bernadotte advances along the appointed road. Now in the confusing Austrian roads and the fog, Bernadotte has taken a wrong turn. He should be back here. He realizes his mistake and comes out of column. And Sue begins condensing his large core for the attack. And Davu moves up, coming out of column. Under Napoleon's direction, Bessier and the guard follow the approved route. And Doktorov attacks. Late morning combat. The French would be outflanked in Griskowitz, except European towns are considered fortifications and they can't be flanked. <laughs> Nevertheless, the French are driven from the town. Colroy's 4th Corps attack on the thin French line between the two towns. Light troops are pushed aside, but not before doing some damage. And here's Lon's artillery at the mission on the hill. This does get flanked. They're able to drive the attackers back and slip off the hill. And now it's midday and the fog of Austerlitz lifts. And with the fog lifting, the coalition army is able to see the full size of the French army. They can see all these troops here massed up ready to attack and they can see all the clouds being stirred up by this huge force to the rear. They send word over to the right to pull back but it won't reach them until later. Murat rides across the frozen lake. Colray sends his troops forward through the hole in the French line. Agratio sends his troops forward. A desperate lawn reacts. Bernadotte brings his corps forward. Dr. Up strains to keep up the pressure. He moves his bags away from any threat, places his own artillery at the mission, and attacks just south of Wellnitz. Sue's corps continues collapsing in on itself. Lichtenstein's cavalry surges forward. Bessier positions the guard ready to support the main assault. Napoleon slides back to reinforce the guard artillery to cover any mayhem that might come from the coalition drive on the French left. And Davu forms up his corps on the French right. Midday combat? Again, Napoleon is expecting a lot from Lon's corps as it must hold the whole attacking coalition army. Lechtenstein's drive on Lon's flank. The light troops on the flank fall apart. Lon slipped out of this envelopment and slammed into Bagratio's cavalry. Oh, but the French Hussars took it on the chin. And now his artillery, positioned just on the south side of Wellnitz. Defending artillery fires first. They drive off the attackers. But there's more. Lon's position holds, but the artillery is lost. Though it did incur a major harvest of fools on the Russian troops. And now it's mid-afternoon. Will this be a short game? Lon's bags are right here. Can he get them undercover soon enough? Lon has said desperate words to Napoleon. Napoleon is watching and reacts quickly. The artillery moves up to the ledge and the Imperial Guard sweeps in. And Lon reacts. The bags form up on the road and begin moving out. The Guard uses the charge rule, but of course the Austrian cavalry can just ride away. Colerath surges forward. Napoleon also gave orders to attack immediately, put the pressure on. Davu has Freon's men charge across the frozen lake. And now Bagratio races along and sends his troops to victory. They are within range of the supply column, and there's enough space between these two. Now technically the game won't formally end until the beginning of the combat phase, when the coalition cavalry is in contact with Lon's bags. But there is no one anywhere who can do anything about that. This is the game's mechanic that tells you that the French left has collapsed. And this is all Lon's core. He lost four detachments, his cavalry and his artillery. But Napoleon had already kind of written them off. The coalition has lost one infantry block. This was an intense battle. I knew this, there was a chance they could break. I was hoping they could hold. Now one thing I can do that my historical counterparts couldn't do is say, okay, let's try again. Next time I play, I'll use the same tactic, but I'll put some more weight over on this side to hold. And we'll see if I can do that and leave enough weight on this side to carry the battle. Because this whole thing is just detachments. 
Although it's backed up with some cavalry, so there could be... It would be an interesting battle. Good game.